Okay, what we saw earlier was an example of what we call a lifting problem. So let's look at that. We had the following situation. We had x, we had y and z. And we were given a function here and we were given a function here. Okay, we had actually more than one. We had three different lifting problems. In one of them, this was c. In the second one, it was c minus 0. Okay, so let me take that for uh, concreteness, the second one as an example. And this was also c minus 0. Of course, the spaces need not be the same. And our map p was z maps to z squared, the squaring function. This happened to be the identity function. And we were looking for f here. Okay, so this is a, called a lifting problem because we are trying to lift phi to f. We'll use somewhat different notation when we saw this. The important thing to note is that we had three such problems. The first two were almost the same, only the space chain and we restricted. <coughs> but the second one, uh, but the third one actually, had integers here, the group of integers. And the map here was z and it was a multiplication by 2. This was the identity. And we were again looking for a function. Okay, let's call it f star or something, a different function. <coughs> So the crucial point in algebraic topology is the formal similarity between these two situations. So what we have in these cases, so x, y, z are objects. So they could be spaces, etc. And uh, phi, f, etc. In this case it was the identity are what are called morphisms. Okay, so let me uh, write this vertically as a or horizontal table will do fine. So for example, the objects could be topological spaces and the corresponding morphisms could be continuous functions. Or otherwise, in the other case, we had groups or if you wish abelian groups. And then you had homomorphisms. You could also have sets and functions. And you could have vector spaces. And then we must have linear transformations. Okay. So what we see in all these cases is the same formal structure. First layer of the formal structure is what kind of creatures do we work with? We work with two kinds of creatures. We have objects, which are spaces and groups and so on. They are the objects we study. And morphisms, so these are maps. Right? So functions with typically some additional property. In the case of sets, they are just any function. But typically they are functions with some additional property. Okay. Now it's worth looking at this and asking what is it that you need to even state this question, lifting problem. Okay. So to state the lifting problem, state this, to state we need, one thing we need is the composition of functions. Let me take composition of functions or more generally composition of what we we'll call morphism, which is of course derived from homomorphisms. And we need identity. And we'll need some compatibility properties between them. Now the identities is not because these guys were identity. Okay. Uh, that is just incidental to this particular problem. But what we need is identities to say that the diagram commutes, which is to say the appropriate composition is an identity. Okay, so let me state a more general lifting problem, when we state a more dif general lifting problem that will become uh, clearer. So before we state the more general lifting problem, we'll see what is this more general notion where we can state the lifting problem. It is what is called the notion of a category. So category more precisely consists of class of objects, objects of C. As I said, examples of this could be topological spaces, our groups, class of morphisms between these, so these are continuous functions, a 
of it would be homomorphisms. And so we have an identity morphism 1x in morphisms of x for any element x. Okay, And we can compose morphisms. So if I have x, I have y. I'm going to draw it like this and we have f and then we have z here and we have g. Well, unfortunately, we'll have to write it as g composed with f. Function notations are flipped in a lot for the last century or so, at least in mathematics. So, g composed with f is g followed by f. But this is formal. It need not be composition. That is, the object sex may not have associated sets with them. But nevertheless, it behaves the same way as a composition. And the associativity and identity properties are, of course, that if I look at f composed with g composed with h, where it is defined, then f composed, this is the same as f composed with g composed with h. And identity of, let's say, y composed with f is f itself, which is f composed with identity of x if f maps x to y. So this is essentially the structure of functions, compositions between functions and that you have and more than that specific classes of functions which must be respected under composition. Crucially, you must have the identity function. Okay. So given this general setting, we can even just state the lifting problem. So in this case, the lifting problem in a general category is we can look at it this way, lifting problem. And let me just draw the diagram. Here's x, here's y, here's z maybe. Let's call this map P, let's call this phi. Last time it was the identity, but that was purely because of the specific problem. And we want f. Okay. So often this will be denoted as y tilde when we are actually talking about lifting and this will be denoted phi tilde for obvious reasons that is the lift or the hat or something like that. So lifting problem is the following. So we have x, y and z. So we have c is a category. x, y and z are in objects of the category. And we are given, so we are given the following, we are given this. And we are given f and phi. These are, uh, sorry, we are not given f and phi. So let me not say, so we are given p and phi. These are, uh, I can't say in, so these are morphisms, appropriate morphisms. So want f, this is going to be a morphism from x to y, x to z. And what is the commutativity of the diagram say? The commutativity of the diagram says that if I look at the composition P composed with F, this is equal to phi. So when I said that we need, uh, yeah. So we need composition and we need to know the equality of such maps. So we had talked about uh, translating the topological problem forward to an algebraic problem, right? So we are, saw just now how we can write something like the lifting problem x from x to y to z in a completely general sense. So we had phi here, we had p here, and we were looking for an f here. Whatever category it is, you can write this. Okay. The key point in algebraic topology is not only this, you have a way of mapping a lifting problem in one category to a lifting problem in another category. And that is through the notion of what we call, what are called functors. Okay. So functor is a map which to each object in the category C will associate an object in the category D. And for morphisms from X to Y, morphisms between the corresponding spaces. By the way, sometimes you have the uh, fl spaces flipped in the morphisms. These are called contravariant functors. We'll see those by and by. And crucially, this respects both composition and identity morphisms. What this means is that if I have, um, so if I look at f of f composed with f of g, where they are defined, you will get that this is the same as just f of f composed with g. Okay. And more than that, let's just see for a moment, when is this defined? This is defined if g maps x to y and uh, f maps y to z. 
appropriate objects x and y. In that case, you notice that f of g will map f of x to f of y. And uh, f of f will map f of y to f of z. And so this composition is defined. So when it respects compositions, I, either side is defined automatically when the other is. And uh, the <coughs> compositions are equal. And rather, composition and applying the functor is the same as applying the functor and then composing. And as far as the identity is concerned, that's also an obvious property. What you have is that f of identity on x is going to be equal to uh, so this is remember this is a morphism from x to x so this is going to be a morphism from f of x to f of x and not surprisingly this is going to be one of f of x okay so why do we need this so so now what uh, rather how can we use this we can use this in the following way okay so suppose we have f as a functor let me take it from top to let's say group okay so this is the category of topological spaces this is the category of groups is a functor okay and then we are given a lifting problem so uh, in this case we had a lifting problem which goes from x to y to z these are given okay and we had f uh, in this case, well, I wasn't calling that f, I was calling that p, we were calling this phi, and this is the f, okay. So, given this, we get, and I'll put get in quotes, we can construct the following lifting problem. f of x makes perfect sense, as the f of phi, and f of phi happens to be a morphism from here to here, okay. And we have z sitting here, so we have f of z. And we happen to have a morphism, which is going to be f of p. Okay. And here we have a function f of f. Now, what can we say about the relation between these two problems? The relation between these two problems, if you think about it, is kind of obvious. Okay. So here, what the condition we need is p composed with f is v. Okay. And the condition we need here is going to be that if I look at uh, f of f and I compose it with f of p okay then what I end up with is uh, f of phi okay but what does our hypothesis tell us that this is f of p composed with f the fact that this is a functor and now you can see that the fact that it's a functor I mean that's the function that it is well defined is that this implies this okay so what have we learned let's try to put this in a precise fashion okay so we can state it in terms of solution to one problem implying the solution to the other uh, problem so what do we have here we have the following situation so we have a category C, okay, in our case example was top, I am now introducing this, this is the category of topological spaces, I implicitly introduced it a moment ago, so we have a category which is category of topological spaces and we are given a lifting problem. C and as we'll soon see many other problems okay the lifting problem looks kind of special but basically any question can be written in this kind of framework and we will see how to do it sometimes we have to do it indirectly sometimes one has to be a bit clever but one can always do it uh, so we have a lifting problem on C and there are many other problems that we can have the, this thing but let's concretely talk about lifting problem on C so suppose we are given these things Okay, so let me put my spaces again, Z, and again my long sort F. This guy is a P, this guy has been called a phi so far. So we have lifting problem on F. Okay, 
so that is so that so question let me be precise here so question is does there exist f such that um, in this case let me write it as p composed with f is phi not in terms of the diagram which is useful to think so so the question is does there exist f such that p composed with f is these things okay so if we are given so our auxiliary tool is going to be a functor so suppose we have a functor given a functor let's say f from top to some other category d but for definiteness let me say group that is the category of groups with homomorphisms between them and then we want we have the following thing so we get a lifting problem and what does this lifting problem look like we have f of x here and over here we have f of y and we can define it as we saw last time already f of phi is the correct is exists it's defined and it goes from the correct place to the correct place similarly f of p goes from the correct place to the correct place okay and here is z let me not write f of f because we don't know that it's in the image of the functor or anything okay so let's call this f hat so you notice these two characters are can canonically given but this is just a lifting problem f hat may not be coming from f from the functor capital f that is and uh, so let's give these names star star and star okay so the following proposition is immediate a proposition is a solution f to star uh, gives a solution f of f which is f hat to the second problem so this is the situation we have so if the first problem have us has a solution then the second problem has a solution and of course not conversely this is not conversely because f hat so f hat may exist but two things can go wrong okay so firstly f hat may not be capital f of f and even if uh, f of f is f hat that is f hat is of this form we may not have p composed with f equals uh, phi may be false okay so why is this this is important to understand because of uh, the difference between the two sides so we map the first problem to the second problem okay so we'll take many more examples as we come along now the second problem may be completely degenerate maybe we have a category with only one uh, object and one morphism that will form a perfectly good category we'll see more examples of categories okay and so then every lifting problem will have a solution so that obviously we can't conclude every lifting problem of the original case is a has a solution okay and there are two reasons we can't one is that the solution may not come from any function at all from x to z and second even if it does you see compatibility of morphisms means that if if f composed with p is phi then uh, we can conclude that images have the composition but it's not conversely the fact that images of functions compose correctly doesn't mean the original functions uh, compose correctly okay so this is an overview of what the philosophy of algebraic topology is we try to construct functors we try to construct uh, and we map topological problems to algebraic problems and then try to show the algebraic problem does not have a solution okay we'll revisit this after we look at many other topological problems and i'll try to summarize what this method is